All right. Can you see us okay on the video there, Lynn? All right. Registration tent not is open yet. All right, all right. Anyway, everybody's getting set up. And uh, we're just right now, we're having Yance going through with the officials, making sure everything's right. And we're going to be setting up the bikes as well, making sure everybody's got their bikes wet and set in. We should be going by Jack Bauer shortly. So everybody hang tight. Thank you for tuning in. This is the final, well, this is the final for the men. We have one more for the women coming right after. And let me explain the layout of this course for you. Here, hold on. All right. So, they are gonna come out of the gate, out of the start corral. Run straight down. Take a hard 180 degree turn down at the end. Come down into your lunges. Finish your lunges, proceed back out down that same, same direction. 180, come back, hit the rower. 180 down this way. So, you get the principle. If you haven't been on deck before and you haven't tuned to the other podcast or the other broadcast earlier, deck of fit, the deck of deck of mile. We have 10 functional fitness zones, lunges, rower, box step overs, uh, med ball sit ups, skier, and farmer's carry, assault bike, dead ball over shoulder, torque tank push, and ram burpees. In between each station, they'll be running 160 meters, tallying up to your mile. Uh, here we come, here's our co-host Jack Bauer. Seven minutes. seven minutes roughly? Yeah. Yeah, we're looking at seven minutes till start time. Alright Jack, who do we have uh, in today's men's feet? Men's heat. I mean you've got Rich Ryan and Ryan Kent. First and second in the previous two races. Um, I think that they're they don't want to get third. They're gonna probably take top two once again. I think the biggest dark horse, um, Ryland Shadag obviously holds the record, and I think that he'll probably get the last podium spot. But uh, sorry, I'm Rich Ryan is not in this race. My brain right. is, not, <laughs> is mixed up right there. Third podium spot, biggest dark horse, who I think will lead a decent portion of this race, maybe even up until the air bike. Glenn Race, completely fresh. He did take an overnight flight on uh, Frontier Airlines from California. Got a few hours of rest in between by the time he landed and came here. Um, but he hasn't raced yet this weekend. And if you look at where Rylan was in his 1704 record versus where Glenn was in his best time, Glenn actually reached the bike in a faster time than Rylan did. So I think that being fresh, not being up from a couple races so far, you'll see Glenn in contention early on. But I think uh, Ryan Kent is going to take over the win second on the weekend. And the thing with Glenn, too, I mean, I saw Glenn in Chicago run as a, uh, a relay with Kevin Gregory. And it was unreal how fast he was. He was running 500s compared to Ryan Kent and Rich Ryan, splitting it up between them and keeping pace with the two of them. He's unbelievably fast, represents us over 40 boys. And yeah, fresh as a daisy. Yeah, he's, he's got to do that. What about, and I mean, we are seeing a mountain of man. Matt, as he says, just call him Stank. Yep. Uh, former NFL player, and he, he has a sub six minute 2K row. So just imagine going, less than 90 seconds, a minute 30, on a 500 meters, and then do that four times in a row. That's how good this guy is in the rower. He's gonna make it look easy. I, I know he's not the best runner. Um, former NFL player, they're not really known as great runners, but his work on the stations, I think it's gonna keep him you know, in it for a little bit, but to be honest, I think that the other athletes are just a little more well-rounded. All right, Noel Medina says he doesn't know about Glenn, but purely because he's got no rye in his name. Oh, uh, great, okay. That, we, I mean, honestly, anybody with a Rye in their name is a very good choice so far this weekend. And Rye Ace? It's close. It's very, it's, yeah, it's, that's it's a, a stretch. It's a stretch. Yeah. All right.
Air speed up rather than just coming to an air stop. You want to hit that apex, start wide, cut exactly. deep, finish wide. Yep. Oh, Glenn getting the final bathroom break yep. in. Oh, That's, a lighter, right? That's a good sign. That's a good sign. It looks like we're getting close to our introductions. Get ready to go. Kevin Gregory also making it. A lot of yellow in this heat. Yeah. Ryan Kent wore yellow earlier this weekend. Got some yellow shoes. Yeah, this is going to be a good one. All right. And you can see here just the contrast in body styles. We have John Howard there. With then Megita and Matt, and right, it's like a, it's like seeing the coffee cups at a, at a Starbucks just going up in size. Final yeah. here, the final category that is, we are going to commence with our athlete callouts. So let's get this yellow equals celebration happens, of fitness underway. All right, now. Qualified for the World Indoor Rowing Championship with a sub six minute mile. Former NFL player, let's welcome Matt Stankiewicz. That's Riley. That's Riley. That's Riley. And that is Riley. And that yes. is not Matt. We're Mr. having a little timing ship issue. Service officer and member of the U.S. Army National Guard, second in the men's team championship yeah, right relay yesterday. Let's welcome Austin Tentahoff. You may see him walking around in the mask, you may know him as Bubble the Clown. He won the co ed title yesterday in the second fifth world championship. Let's welcome Kevin Gregory! And coming from California, a member of the Spartan Pro Team with over a dozen Spartan Elite Podiums, let's welcome John Howard! And fourth at the Jenga at World Championship yesterday. First in the men's team race yesterday with Mark Godet. Let's welcome David Magida. <laughs> Former DECA Strong record holder who took down Hunter McIntyre's original mark. Finished third in the DECA Strong earlier this morning. Let's welcome Ryan Corning. And he won DECA Fit New Jersey in August. Finished second in the co-ed team and seventh in the DECA Fit Individual World Championship yesterday. Let's make some noise for Dylan Scott. And U.S. Marine with the fifth fastest time in the DECA mile qualifying. Let's welcome Chaz Hatton. Several Spartan Hatton. Elite podiums in his career, a social worker, a now, veteran, green, a mountain runner for California. Man, Let's welcome Aaron Nolan! And a member of the Spartan Pro Team since 2014, one of only seven men with three top career top ten finishes in the Spartan World Championship. Let's welcome from California, Glenn Grace! And... Held the deck of fit mile and the deck of fit, the mile and the strong all-time records at one point this year. Took second place deck of fit yesterday and first in the deck of strong. Let's make some noise for Ryan Kent. And he took third place in the deck of fit world championship yesterday. He's coming from Greece. He took a deck of fit and deck of mile record holder. Let's welcome Riley Shadeg! Ladies and gentlemen, this is your deck of mile world championship. He right here, right now in Atlantic City. We are moments away. It is not often you see people make Ryan Kent look small. <laughs> yes. Timing, are we ready? Matt's arms are bigger than my legs. Oh, yeah. Stand by, athletes. We're about ready to go. All right, people. it is time to Stay shine. Stay tuned. This is going to be fast. Rapid. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Deca Mile Arena. This is the Decathlon of Fitness. We're all Glenn Race first to the Van Ryland and Ryland, I meant. Glenn and Ryan are first to the lunges and first two out of the lunges. That's my guess. Yep. Today's your day. Ryan Kent is going to be patient. Today's your day. You are going to be He is hungry. I talked to him earlier today. He wants this one back. Yep. Obviously. Deca! Deca! Go! I like how everyone's looking at their watches in the start line. Back out of the way. Look at that. Oh, Riley cornering like he's a mascot. Look at that. He has like a 10 meter lead. Ryan, Ryan Stag, Ryland Stag, Ryan Kent, John Howard, Glenn Race, Megita Austin. Oh. I am very shocked that Ryland did not go with the. I know they were fired to down. Yeah, a bit of a difference. It can't usually go into a further one. Now yeah. getting the closest. Yeah. Yeah. Look at everybody even using the hands now, getting right down on yeah. it. Video feed is really fuzzy apparently. All right. We'll do what we can. We can't do anything. Ryan Kent is out, Ryan Kent today, a minute eight in. John Howard, David McGee, wow. Glenn Race. John Howard, good work. Dylan Scott Holmes, there's Matt. Ryan Corning. Arc that that Rilo was taking very wide and all the his speed stays so high. Hold on to this for a second. I gotta go see something. Hold on. Yeah. Best rower in the field. Matt Stanko is pulling okay. 138. All right, Ryland's definitely on. Uh, he had a couple seconds on Kent. All right, let's see here. Ryland at 339, 340 meters. Wolfram at 137. Kent at 341. 358. Kent maybe by 10 meters behind. Kent on the lead about a second and a half separating. Let's uh, get out of these boys' ways. Go ahead, my friend. Thanks, guys. Thank you for the compliments. We'll just try to stay with it here. Glad to bring this to you. It looks like we're probably going to get Ryland Shadag out just before Ryan Kent. There he is, because he got feet out of the strap. And he has gone an excellent transition by Ryland. He's got Kent right behind him. We're looking at about a 20 meter lead. Ryland looking great. And they have gapped themselves a bit here. Glenn Race has two poles left. He'll be out. Glenn, feet out of the straps and gone. Yeah. Matt and David McGee right behind him. Dylan Scott making moves on the roar. And there's Matt. Yep. Coming down. We've got Shadag. Head for the boxes. Brian Kent right behind him. Once again, Ryland just decides to keep his momentum up and speed rather than coming to a break and turning around. So he's not taking the shortest path. It looks like Kent is a little bit faster making ground. Oh, and a little stammer from Ryland. That could make the difference. Glenn Race is shot here. He's just shifting a little bit. Glenn's fast on it. I find Ryland's just not as smooth on the boxes. He's hitting them harder and it tends to shift them around on him. This happened to him in the fit as well. Look at that. 
where his can very smooth across. And he made up ground there, probably about five meters. Kevin Gregory coming in. Who's gonna be third out here? Three zones in, and they are already done with a, with a 30 second workout before some people are getting in there. That's how fast. Glenn Ray's gone. David McGee right with Glenn Ray. Oh, they have a history of uh, throwing elbows. Oh, and Nikita makes the pass. Right again, the way. here comes. Shadag, and again, the same positions. They have settled into the spots they want to be. Now, earlier we had Ryan Kent with a miscount on this and leave early. Five reps to go. They're both at 11, 12. Kent looks like he's got a little bit of a better, a little fast break. Look, Glenn Race choosing to face the other direction, which is smart because he gets started on his rep faster. Yep. He, he makes up instantly a half rep. I think Kent's going to come out of here with the lead. Barely. There he goes, there he goes. Ryan Kent out. Oh, but that was a 10 meter swing right there. Wide turns from Shadag. We're keeping an eye on here. Kevin Gregory and Matt coming in. That's a very good point. Yeah. Watch out, Mark, Mark was just pointing out that Ryland's biking background. He might know how to corner a little bit better. He's really extending that turn to keep the momentum. Glenn Race and David McGee coming out nearly together. McGee with a slight lead over Glenn. We're going to go to the skier here. Again, they switch sides this time. First time we've had them crossover. Ken decided he wanted to go with the momentum that time. Yeah, yeah. We had a little damper switch from Schneeg not liking where he was originally set. Did it pretty smooth. And he is set pretty low from the looks there. Like, was that a five? That looks like, yeah. Six, five or six. As a little compared to Ryan Kent set at like a seven six by the and a half. six and a half, seven. Yeah. Now I expect now 41 I, RPM. 40. They're both in the low 40s for their strokes per minute. Now I'm thinking off this, what we're gonna see is we should see, I think we'll still see Kent come off the lead. This might be a bit yeah. of a wash, but I think Magita might stretch his lead a little bit over I Glenn agree. Race. I, you want me to get us? Yeah, let's see if we can get it over the split. Kevin Gregory coming in. And again, remember, we still have the most pivotable station coming up. Uh, we've got Glenn Paul a 150, Dave Megiddo one, uh, 147, 145 for Ryland, 142 consistently for Kent. I think Kent's going to have a couple more seconds. Yeah. And we do know Kent to be really good as Ryan Corning coming in. 41, 45. Yeah. Yeah. Kent's going to open up a couple seconds. Kent still, I think, just extending his lead slightly. He is so smooth on this gear. And these guys need to do this. They need to get out there because when those big dogs get on that assault bike and start throwing in sub 20 times, oh, yeah. they need to have their gap. But to be honest, there's I Ken. Ken is gone. Shadag gone. Two seconds. Two seconds. Not much of a change. Maybe extend his lead by a oh, meter, maybe two. There's that wide corner from Shadag. Won't let him out of his Ryan, yeah, Ryland's staying wide the entire time. He knows what he's doing in those corners. Yes. Here we go, Glenn Race, David McGee pushing hard. We've got, we got, a, we've got an 80 meter lead right here. Ryan right here, real quick, we'll get him in a second. Yeah. McGee out McGee first. Glenn, Glenn just finishing. We've got Ryan Kent coming in. There you go, and Glenn Race is out. Five seconds. There we go, a little bit of a confusion there, and they're going side by side. There's no guessing who's where on this. You know exactly. Megita has a one-step lead. Ryland right behind him. Judges keeping an eye on those toes. Yancey right in there. Two feet. Just the toe tap needs to cross. Ken maybe extended by about five feet there. We are talking feet now, not meters. They both are still looking good. There you go, next up. Oh, a little bit of a collision. Oh, 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 oh. That was 
Unintentional, you can tell. Unintentional, but it made a difference, yeah, though. 100%. There goes Ryland. Dylan Scott making moves and getting into the game here. Still with the same running tactics. There we go. Shadag making a move up I on think the outside. Ryan's going to corner before him. Take him on the outside. There it oh, is. Look it. at that move. He holds it up. That many main take him out. in third place. Glen Race is about to be in fourth. Get on the bike. Let's see how this goes. Let's go. There we go. On the bike. Shadag with just a little bit of a bullet on the bike. Shadag going at six. 700 watts. 700 watts here. Hot, low 7s, high 6s on the watts. 81 RPM. He's 60. 12 calories in. Stay still. Yeah, we'll stay still as much as we can. 9 calories left. We'll be real still. We got three and a half. Two. Ryan is winding down. Ryan's done. We've got four and a half calories. Three, two, one calorie left. Let's go, 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 go. 11 Wilding seconds out. between the two of them getting off. What a massive swing. Move. And the thing is. Can he make that run up again? Look at that distance now. We're dealing with like a 50 meter lead. But Kent, that, look, Kent's that was running intentional. Labor. He wanted to let him know his bottom. I'm going to go and get uh, yeah. play. Ryland coming in. He's running his labor. Kent's running his labor. He's into the dead balls. has a 10 calorie lead over Glenn. I think he is in a good position. All right. Three for Ryan? Five. five. This is five. number five. Okay, five. Going rep for rep. Not much to choose between them. Ryland maybe making up a half a rep there. I think that bike took a lot out of Kent and he's still recovering right now. That's, yeah. But he needed to make a move at some point. Yeah, and this might be it. This might be the move for Sh Shadag trying to fight back, trying to counter Ken's move. Dylan Scott. Uh, all right. Dylan Scott moves up to fourth. David Magida. So we currently have Ryan Kent, Ryland Shadag, David Magida, and Dylan Scott. He looks like he's tired out, like he gave the move there. About the same. Maybe a little less. Maybe 10 feet closer. Yeah, maybe a little bit less. David McGee here kind of has separated himself Comfort into third. third. We have Dylan about to round the bend. But I would say he's, he has a good 20 seconds on third at the moment. Dylan has really separated himself from Glenn Race, yeah. though. David McGee looks like he's going to get out here soon. Ryland's moving a lot better than Ryan. Let's go get into the tank. There you go. Side by side, side by side, that's what we want. And Ryland pushing hard. Here we go, these guys can go head to head right here. You can see exactly. Kent, with just that 10 foot lead. This is gonna be about transitions and who's got guts left to push. It's a long 10 feet though with the sled. I would say less than one sled, or one and a half sled. That's about it at the moment. Kent making nice transitions, getting from the push to the pull very quickly. Yeah, there, he's really picking up on that one. Not using his road technique, going with the fast feet. Yeah. And Ryland looks like he maybe is slowing a bit, he's gasping. I think Ryland is going to get next to him on the burpees. At the, he'll push in that run. So this is the battle to the finish for the burpees. And we have seen Kent is very good on the burpees. Oh yeah. David Magida, let's not forget, he's already on here. He's done with, look at Magida pulling. Look at the, the difference in speed with the pull technique. 
from Mikita yeah. versus Ryland. Yeah, Mikita has made a lot of ground, and that could have to do. Now he did over pull there. Yes. But that could have to do. Again, these floors can be slick, and when you row, that tank can slide. But he's losing it all on the eye. Uh, that push push right now. Dylan Scott about to come in in fourth. Glenn Race, 15 seconds behind him in fifth. We'll see how it ends. I think it's our last, the last round from Ryan Kent. Yep. Now he's got to remember, do not turn into here. You've got to take the right out of here. We're 15 minutes in right now. What do you think of this course? Is this course a fast course? You have 20 turns instead of 10? I don't think so. But it sure seems like it is. Yeah. I, and he's Ryan, gone. He's gone. 15, 12. He can resist in about 16 flat. Oh my god. That is close. I he made up. He's gonna, he is going to make a move in and the front. And he's flying. Get to here before. Oh my god. We got to get out there and see that run. Mikita with a comfortable oh. third. Ryan's got to get ahead of him. We got to get out of the way. So yeah. Man right. behind the box here. Yeah. They won't run into the box. Ryland has Man. pulled ahead what massively. What is going Ryan Kent's mind right now? He knows this is going to be the most painful minute of the entire weekend. Ryland getting there first. 50-49. There we go. We're going to get right in there. That's a two rep lead. Kent picking up the pace. There's a two gap. Kent definitely oh, picking up the pace. Kent coming down to the ground like it's a hammer. Just dropping it. Oh my god. Ryland not to let go. Run over right now. Yancey making sure reps are clean, getting them up. Kent Shadag is slowing. So many people screaming around here right now. Shadag is slowing. Kent picking up the pace. Ryan, Ryan's one ahead at this point. But Shadag has the position. Kent has That's to go around right. him. He has to go around he him. He has to go around him. He needs a one but rep he lead. That. He's got to get that. And there it is. Ryan oh, Kent. Six right behind. 1656. Six. Unofficially, wow. not just a record breaker, a record destroyer. Oh, David Magida coming in here. And I guarantee you, if Megita said he thought he ran this time, he would have thought he won. Uh, yeah, he's going to break 18, which he's only been done twice in history. That was unbelievable. That was insane. Yeah, I guess it was over when Ken got to the burpees, but I don't think it was. Ryland needed to get there first, though. He, he did. He did. he did. He did exactly what he needed to do. It was one rep short. That's the only And difference. you know what? It could come down to his control back on the box jumps, and some of his transitions were not quite as smooth. Yeah. Dylan Scott coming in in a solid fourth, all alone. Really not a chance to catch McGee here. He's home and cooled. But an excellent performance by both these guys. Yeah. Sub 17. David McGee coming in. What a finish for David. Third place. Third place in your Deca Mile World Championship. David McGee. After a couple of near podiums this weekend, finally gets what he was looking for. Ryan Race coming in looking great. This is going to battle over here. Austin. Wow. Austin and Chaz coming in. Chaz, as we said, an underdog completely, but showing he's got what it takes. You might not pick him out of the crowd and said, there's an elite athlete, but here he is. Matt Stanks coming in, rumbling in now. Come on. Come on, here you go. Dylan has run every race this weekend. He's done relay. He's done open. Open. <laughs> he did his open strong. Aaron Nolan trying to finish sub 20 at the end. <laughs> Dylan Scott coming in. Fourth place in your Tech Mile World Championships. Unbelievable. Austin has five left. Austin has five less. Run race has got to be very close. Two left for Austin. Kevin Gregory with another fifth. Unbelievable. Kevin Gregory, what a comeback on the burpees. I think he was fifth and strong earlier. Austin comes in for sixth. Oh, he's stuck by 
Tyler Burpee is unbelievable. What a performance by Chaz. Come on, Glenn, finish strong. Left. Glenn Race, what a job by Glenn Race. Unbelievable. Matt Stead coming in. Big man rumbling. How are we going now? We're going to finish. John Howard's going to finish this up. I don't know what to tell you other than I said the mile would be exciting and that was insanity at its best. What a battle. This is something that needs to be rewatched time and time again because that was one of the best finishes of all time. They had to step over. Let's go, John. Come on, John. And we got one more to go. We still got the women who are going to be just as exciting. Come on, John. John Howard coming across. Let's take a look at the train wreck carnage we got here. Bodies all over the floor. That did that seem to affect things at the time. That's one second. But that right was the second that did it. That was definitely the time. All right, we're going to see if we can catch up with Kent really quickly, maybe Ryland, and before we head down for the women. Ah, maybe we'll let him lie on the ground for a while. Can you talk? I can talk now. I might have to put my hands. So, any idea how your time was? I heard it was under 17. It was under 17. So. I gotta be honest with you. Three races this weekend, all completely different experiences. I thought there was no way I could hurt more than deck of fit. But that was like times 10. That was so hard. I've never been able to dig that deep. And I just think Ryland, man, like, it's that competition that really just brings the best out of you and lets you find things that you didn't even know that you had in you. And without somebody like that pushing me, and, you know, sometimes he may get the best of me, and that's okay, but it's the competition, man, that I love. And fortunately, I came out on top this time, but we're going to have so many battles together over the years. And, um, today was just just the beginning. When Ryland passed you on the last run, I was okay. I was took okay lead. With that. You were okay with that. I was that okay didn't... with that. I wanted to lower my heart rate a few beats. I knew if I came in less than 10 seconds behind him, as long as I could crush him, I felt like I could I could make up that time. So that was actually part of my plan was to let him go. I'm like, if he's passing me, his heart rate's still high. He's not gonna be able to crank these out. So. I let him, it was a lot of cat and mouse out there, as you saw. He played to his strengths, I played to mine, and it turned out to be a freaking epic race. Congratulations. Man. Two-time champ. I love all you guys back home supporting me, my mom, my dad, my wife, Basin, Sharon, Dave. Man, I love you guys. We did it. We did it. Quick, quick talk, we'll hit Dave. Dave, congratulations, third place, buddy. That was well earned, man. Yeah, a really, really long, busy weekend. So I was uh, just thrilled to finally get that podium on. <laughs> it was tough, man. It was so deep. Like, you know, Ken and Shadag are both so good. Like, you know, if you come to a race and you want to say, like, I'm going to beat those guys. But, you know, I feel realistically like I'm a year away from, from beating them. And then Rich was obviously so strong this weekend. So this, when he wasn't here, I knew the door was open, I knew my legs were right down. Like I was dog tired, but I think I got two or three rounds in and I realized I was like in that dog fight for third place. And, uh, I kind of you get wings on your feet, you know, when you, when you realize like, oh, I'm, I'm in the podium, I'm in the money, you know. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, four races this weekend, or worst finish was fifth. We ain't complaining. One of the field. best there is, buddy. It's a deep field, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to actually focus on this next year a little bit. Maybe we can uh, actually win one of these. I can knock one of these boys off the top, man. Good for you, man. That was good. I'm happy. Love that one. That was awesome. Great job. Thanks, bud. We're going to have one more. See if we can get Ryland before we head down to the ladies.
Yeah. Guys, can we cut in for one sec? Yeah. What? Just cut in for one sec, yeah, yeah. Ryland. Hey, Kate. Okay. Hey, Unbelievable race. Picture. Great weekend. <laughs> you ever had a race that close? Yeah, yeah. Finally got the podium. Uh, Oh, in bike yeah. racing, yeah, but yeah. not, not smart. Somebody dead. actually have to step over you at the end to try to get by. No, uh, in, on bikes it's like a wheel through. Like half a wheel, quarter of a wheel. Like, but that was awesome. Uh, honestly, after yesterday, I was really worried that my my fitness was going down because I was like 45 seconds slower than my previous time. But I felt good today. Like, PR'd both events, so I'm happy that I just, yesterday was a little bit of a rough day, and today, like, today is. Pulling on the station. Two key moments, and I'll let you get back your breath. Yeah. One, you guys had a collision on the farmer's carry. Yeah. And that, I mean, that obviously was unintentional, but definitely played a factor in the end of the game. Do you think that cost you, or do you think you made that up on the run when you passed him on the last loop anyway? I mean, everything adds up, but uh, honestly, if anything, that was he. As far as I'm concerned, leader has the right of way. So, like, if you're in front, you kind of get line choice, and he turned left, and I was worried about someone stagging right like there are people coming in and there were dumbbells going and picked up on the left so he turned his left and i had someone right there and i just didn't want to hit them but uh so honestly was, if anything it's my fault so but Ryland, i just want to say one of the best athletes in the world and the classiest guy in the world man appreciate it can't wait to see you going all right we are going to head back down we're going to head back down so we catch the beginning of the women's here they're going out and setting their bikes, so we're okay. We haven't missed anything. Unbelievable, great athletes. That's your podium again. Ryan Kent in first, Ryland Shadeg in second, and David Megida in third. And all proven to be classy individuals. And just unreal athletes. Now expecting the same. Jack's coming up with us here. Jack, we're seeing the women get set up. They're resetting the course. Who are some of the women we want to watch out for in this? Um, I think Meg Jacoby coming in fresh. We've seen what she's done in High Rocks. Uh, she's gonna be a dark horse, but after we've seen two straight races, Tara Jackson just dominating and showing that specifying on deck and training is gonna pay off. I think that you were right at the uh, the prediction that she's gonna go one 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 all three events. She is again dial like you said dialed in. Yep. She wanted this very badly, and Chris Roglowski back on the floor, floor after having the deck and strong yeah, off. volunteering all morning. And of course, well, it's yeah. morning, as Chris does. Yeah, she's the one of a came. Kind of, and I've also noticed today, speaking with Lauren earlier, she almost seemed a little more rested today as well, having the strong off. So yeah. she could be a factor. I 100% agree. Um, I mean, she held the record for a reason in the past. We know what Lauren can do when uh, when she's fresh, when she's tired. We saw the Spartan Games. But I think Tara, like Ryan Kent, just proved. Doesn't matter, you have two races under your belt or one, you can still deliver on that last one once the adrenaline gets going. And the thing is, with the time between, like these are all obviously high-end endurance athletes, with the time between to recover, yeah, it's not hitting them as hard, you know? And, and with the workouts not being as what you would call a heavy weight, yeah. where it really bears down on you and stuff, seems to allow them to recover quick. And again, Tara looking like she's ready to go for a stroll, relaxing, sneering at me. Yeah. Yeah. Just ready to go, she's having fun. And that was the same attitude that played so well for her and strong. Now, Alondra has two second place finishes. I mean, she's as good as anybody in this field. She was less than 10 seconds behind in both of those races, I'm pretty sure. Um, I wonder if she'll make a strategic move. I just don't know if she has the wheels to do something like Ryland did right there. And her stations aren't that much better collectively than Tara, uh, who we saw won a race with only the stations. So I, I think that she might be playing uh, bridesmaid to Tara again. We are still set to. We have Bridget Brown in here. We got Heather yep. White. Heather White with the, you know, the, the plus minus performance of the strong with an 11 seed finishing. Fifth. Those 11 seeds in general have done well. Yeah. Yeah. Like Chris Rodlowski back in it. Who else yep. we got in here? Laura Cummings. Laura if we're Cummings. talking about running, Laura Cummings is here to run. She won the co-ed title yesterday with yeah, Kevin another Gregory. Another DECA world champion. Absolutely. Katie Beers. Uh, she, Katie Beers. She got, got like get a little, you know, eighth, eighth or so. Uh, I I know she trains down at get, uh, get it with. Getting core fitness with Joe and Rivera and everybody that is down there. Good enough. They've had a really right good weekend. There, yeah. That's all you need to know. Coming in, you knew they would, though. I mean, that yeah. team has got that together. That yeah, is... she she was like eight through ten somewhere in that range uh, earlier in Deca Strong. So to do work on the stations. I mean, you got Bruce Jackson, Ryan Corning, Matty Jones, all coming from that gym. Yeah, absolutely. They definitely have their. They know what they're yeah. doing. They got the training in. Yeah, well, this is going to be uh, very exciting, and I think that you, 
you saw a couple of breakaways in the men's field because they went in with seed times they were just so much better than everybody else Rylan and, and Ryan Kent were on a different level yeah. getting into this and that is exactly how the results ended up showing up after that it flip-flopped a couple you know some some people might only run one deck a mile in their life so the seed time is really indicative of how they their fit at the time um, I think that Tara and Alondra just their seed times are just so much faster than the rest of the field but then you're adding like Jacoby to things. I think this might be a three woman race for a good, for we, a good know, we know we know from recent recent bias that Meg Jacoby can run really well exactly and this could come down again we got some interesting and I do believe any of that should talk to Ryland Ryland Class Act says he doesn't think it mattered whatsoever but it's those little things that can cost you one that one collision the little fidgeting, the box, the box jumps, spinning jumps, spinning out on him. Yes, yeah. that's the stuff that adds up. And, and the ones where he would take the, I know it, it was to keep his momentum up, his speed up, but he'd always take the far mat instead of like stopping, taking the U-turn, getting out of there quicker. So little strategy there. So again, if you got your picks, about to begin. Yeah, if you got your picks, let's hear them, send them in. Is Tara going to get the triple crown? I predicted she would, and I have no reason to back away from that prediction now. Dave said that on like Tuesday, so this is not like a new thing. No, but I am known to change. I'm quite, quite, uh, quite, yeah. quite proud to do not so. not to enter the contest. I am known to people. I just spell my name wrong. <laughs> but, yeah. I've had this for a while. I've just been watching Tara train for this for a long time. And I have a lot of faith in her. That said, this is a Herculean task. I mean, we all know Ryan Kent is a massively amazing athlete, and he was not able to pull off the clean sweep. No. No, it's just that hard when you got that it, much competition. It would be so strange if she didn't win, though, because she won the bookend. She won the no running, the most running. Now this is kind of in the middle. You'd expect her to win based on her results so far. But a third race in the weekend, that's this is going to be the most difficult one, in my opinion. Now, we do know Tara tends to hang back a bit. So I'm not expecting her to go out first. Who are we expecting? I.e. Uh, Lauren Weeks. I'm going to get the field. starts in the L. Yeah, <laughs> Lauren. Lauren and Laura, okay, we figure is a good yeah, pet. I agree. So I figure let's get close, we'll get close for the introductions, yep. we'll drop back a little bit more this time. Yep. Jacoby for the whim, hardest working person I ever met, Alondra for the whim. Right. I can't argue with either of them. We are going to get some athletes on the course. We have some athlete announcements, call outs. So first we're going to start off with our friend. She finished eighth yesterday at a deck of strong. I'm sorry, she finished eighth earlier today. Let's welcome Katie Burris. And completed the deck of mile earlier. Oh my goodness, Jack Bauer, you're really screwing with me now. Have a right, everyone. And the two-time High Rocks World Champ. I'm just reading what he gave me, so don't... Oh, right under through. the bus. Throwing Jack under the bus. the two-time High Rocks World Championship 2021. Let's welcome Lauren Weeks. And your reigning High Rocks World Champion. And seventh yesterday in the deck of fit. Just became the best Never woman ever to run the world's toughest mother. That is mother. exactly right. That's right. the noise for Chris Rodolfi. What Rodolfi. Chris has done this week is unbelievable. And competed in the 2020 I mean, Olympic just, Trials and the Marathon. Just, that phrase is becoming all too common. What Chris yesterday. has done is unbelievable. Let's welcome Laura Cummings. And it'll Cummings. just keep happening. Laura Cummings again, pure speed. Qualify for all three distances in the DECA World Championship Elite Division. Former soccer player at Oklahoma State University. And third in the DECA pit yesterday. Make some noise for Bridget Brown. Bridget Brown having a great race. They're all the way. Division one runner, Pitt University. Set a High Rocks world record two weeks ago. Let's welcome Meg Jacoby. Meg, like we said, fresh as a daisy, and ready to go. Know her well. She's been crushing it all High Rocks Record. Long, current record holder of the Decca Strong, the only woman to have two top times in all three Decca distances, two wins this far this weekend. Let's welcome Tara Jackson. And she's a foot and ankle surgeon. She's second in the Decca Fit and Decca Strong this weekend. Let's make some noise for Alondra Greenlee. Ladies and gentlemen, that is your Deca Mile World Championship field. They are about to take some, take the course. Are you ready? Here we go. Back up, Warrior. Ladies, welcome to the Deca Mile Arena. This is the Catalan of Fitness where all levels of fitness come together on 
You got last, last second. Last second for the win? Yeah. I'm sticking with Tara. Tara again. Oh, Dylan Scott, fourth place. Congratulations, somebody. All right, let's see if Tara goes three for three. She will. Go! Bet on it. Make the there we go, there we go. Yep, I agree. Here's the thing, I'm going to say this though. Is Alondra Fast saying, I've had enough of second place, I'm ready to yeah. take my win? No. <laughs> Alondra takes third in this. All right, Dylan Scott calling Alondra in third. Oh, surprise, Laura Weeks is leading. Unbelievable shock. But she's earned the right to do that, honestly. With and this is level. this is Lauren Weeks' style every time. This is what she does. Yeah. Lauren Weeks, Alondra, Meg Jacoby, Laura, Chris, Tara, Bridget, Heather White. All right, we are clear. <laughs> Look at the lunges by Meg Jacoby. Meg yeah. Jacoby's got that leg speed, yep. and she's got that strength that I think it really works for her in this event. If Tara gets beat by anyone, it's Meg Jacoby. Well, coming in, I mean, it is a huge advantage being that. It's also a huge advantage to be that. There goes threat. Lauren, Meg. That is to be expected. Bridget Brown. This is a big Top three, Laura coming. And then the herd. Wow. What, a, what a tight group right there. But we've seen this is this is not insurmountable. This no. is this is a good lead. But it's not necessarily a safe lead. Uh, Here we go. Lauren Weeks, Meg Jacoby, push in. Richard Brown. Brown, Laura coming. Alundra Greenlee. Chris Roglowski. Tara Jackson. Another way coming in. She's off the back. Her bike is so strong. Absolutely. We've seen this before. A lot of speed here, but the power athletes can still come back. This is just the start. Literally, this race is almost a warm up until we hit the speed. Meg Jacoby's a 143 right now on the rower. 143, let's get a sail, get some Lauren speed splits here. Still Lauren. 152. 150 for Bridget. Or for uh, Meg. Bridget, 153, 157 for Laura. Alondra doing a 150. Second, Tara's pulling a 148. And this is where Tara starts to make her move. Our Meg is calling. 240 meters in. 235 for Laura. Lauren. Mr. Golaski, 180 in. Tara Jackson, 210. It does look like we'll probably have to take it off. We're very consistent. Tara's oh. dropping that tear is moving. But we got a 147, 145. Once we get to about 400, I want you guys to get Yeah, we are going to get out of the way. Hide behind the sign. I had, I had like a Ray Lewis collision down there. Nothing's in the mid. We'll just stop. Okay. This is our safe zone. Yeah, yeah. Behind the sign. Best spot to be right here. All right. Uh, we've got. Tomorrow week's at 440 meters. 475 for Meg. 481, she's got two poles left, she'll be off. Tara still in the point. Oh, and she let go of that. Very clean transition for Meg. Lauren Weeks, not quite as smooth, but still a good transition. That is a huge lead already for Meg. Bridget Brown off. Alondra Greenlee. Tara Jackson right behind her. We're gonna scooch over. Yep. Lots of us. <laughs> this is something about the Meg gets a ball to my back that she doesn't use very often. And I don't know how clean it's gonna be. It's moving well, but again, there's those little stumbles. Maybe getting too far. Leads are moving over the back wall here. Now you do have some girls coming in who do move over this well. Bridget Brown, she'll be very quick hopping over these. 
Katie Burst in the gray tank top. Yes, thank you. Katie Burst, yep. Some of these refs are a little well behind. I do believe that they are making a little ground on Meg, but oh, out Meg she goes. Lauren, maybe two left. Over. There goes Lauren. Set. Alondra. Yeah. Bridget's out. Bridget's out. We should see Alondra and then Tara coming next. Tara with two more. There goes Alondra. Alondra. Fifth. Oh, Tara with what? Oh, Chris almost for the fall. Smile. Hey, Tara's out. Hey, you got this. You can work your way back in. You're not out. All right, next move. Gotta go to the Tara. next one. Long race still. Thank you, Kobe, coming in. Lauren Weeks, coming right in. Tara coming in six. Make you probably looking good. But again, we're getting close to where this race really starts. We're getting close to the skier. Yep. Make you Kobe out. out. One rep left for Lauren. Oh, a bit of a collision. Lauren's Lauren did an extra rep. Lauren's still going. We just yeah. a 13 second lead. And Bridget's out. Bridget's out for third. Meg's coming. All right. 26 second lead over. Thank you, Kobe, with what looks like about an 80 meter lead on Lauren Weeks for second place. She had a 40 second lead over Tara Jackson right now. And we're at the start of zone number five. Unreal. Alondra made up a little bit of a gap on the, uh, the run. Sarah Jackson comes in. This Lauren Weeks is pulling a 201. Hi, Tara. Skate your way back in. Make the Kobe a 201. Thank you, Kobe. At about a two right now. Waiting for all the ladies to get in. Got one more to go. Heather White still coming in here. Stay there, Jack. Don't move. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Okay, you're good. Here we go, let's get some numbers. What are we at? Almost 300 meters right now. 224 for Lauren. 170 for Bridget. 170 for Alundra. Chris Rogoski in there at 90. 152 for Tara, making a bit of a move. Fastest second. Uh, here we go. Yeah. Second yeah. Yeah. Tara bringing a couple of seconds. This is where she started to pull earlier in the strong, started to make her comeback. Tara and Alundra are the only two pulling under two right now. 360, 201, 201, 200 meters right now for Alondra, for Meg. 350 for Lauren. But a six or seven pull lead over there. So we are going to see. I think so. And Meg has sped up a little bit. I think Alondra's going to pass Bridget. Bridget's like 206, 207 right now. Bridget for her size is surprisingly good at this. There goes Meg. She had a 13 second lead coming off last time. Lord, no more seconds of barn right there. No more seconds. I'll play it. Okay. I mind this. Yep. We got Meg Jacoby rounding the corner. She's getting ready to head into the farmer's carry. There goes Bridget. Alundra did make the pass on Bridget. And Meg's in the farmer's carry. Tara Jackson out. 
There we go. Thank you, Toby, starting it. Already on it. Look at the cornering difference between Meg Jacoby, just a nice arc. Lauren almost comes to a full stop around the corner this year. There's the under in. Here's my the corner here. Tara Jackson. Meg Jacoby out of the zone. They're making little strides in, but are they enough for, to really get that back at it? Meg rounding back the back side of the run. There goes Lauren Weeks. Pain in Tara's face. She is giving everything she's got. Alandra gone, third place. This is where it is, where Tara is just, Tara has made the pass. Tara passed Bridget Brown on that farmer's carry. The pain in her face was unbelievable. 67. She's two, three calories done. Lauren Weeks is coming in. Stay off to the side until all the ladies get here. Alondra Greenlee, I think they are starting to maybe chip slightly into Meg's lead. Lauren having to fidget with the buttons there. I wonder if there's been an issue. Tara and Bridget on the machine at the same time. 67 RPMs for Meg. How many calories left? 11 calories left for Meg. 18 for Lauren. <laughs> 20 calories for Tara, 20 calories for Bridget. They're neck and neck. 7, 16. Yep. Coming in. Alondra, Meg, Meg's finally showing a little bit of fatigue. Alondra, focus, sheer, straight ahead focus. Well, now Lauren did struggle with this bike earlier. She had struggles with it on the pitch. She does seem to, and her seat looks a little bit low. I think Jacoby making a round there. Her strut has slowed a little bit, but she still looks good. Who's coming off second here? Is Lauren going to hold position? I think Alondra's going to go off next. Followed slightly by Tara. They would come on the same chain. There goes Alondra. She's off. Alondra takes second place. Lauren right behind her. Oh. Tara overtakes Bridget. And looking smooth with that form. I don't think I've ever seen so much pain in Tara's face. She's giving everything she's got. And finally. Here comes the Lander Greenlee. That's a 40 second gap over second place right now. This goes to Lauren Weeks. Fresh and really talented. Tara comes in. Exactly. Like this is the thing we thought could happen. We thought yep. Meg could come in fresh as a daisy and just yep. throw down. And maybe if some of the if she did not go out so fast, maybe some of the other women would have held up. She's already out of here. And this is nothing against like she is as talented as against. Right. Tara, 
fatigue is real, but she's just showing up. No matter what, I'm on the classical field right now. Tara really at the best pace here right now, where she may be able to take third place away from Lauren. Tara's really good. I think Alondra a little too far ahead for her to catch her on this one. Chris Rogloski coming in, looking great. Meg Jacoby about to hit the sled. I'll get a split. We're gonna let Meg hit the sled here. We'll go up with her in a minute. And Tara! Tara takes second place, has a bit of a shoe issue. We're gonna go to Meg, we got Tara. Still a 39 second lead over second place. I think that's insurmountable at this point, to be honest. I think they're probably right, but we do have Meg in first, Alondra in second, Tara currently in third. Meg finishing her first push. Tara giving everything she's got. Lauren running her down, just stalking her. That's two of ten for Meg right there. Almost identical. One thing. Now, Alandra has done this a couple times. She has this technique down, and she is moving a bit faster. Tara coming in strong. I feel like the majority of the moves are made on the whole portion of it, so we'll see how Alondra does relative to Meg right and here. And we did see Tara make some big moves on this earlier. Meg is rowing while Andre's kind of holding it still, but hers is drifting a little bit. And now she can straighten it out, the judge can straighten it out. But I find it's best to straighten it out with a little row on the pull yourself. Yeah. You get the fastest, fast transition this way. Let's just go further down so that we get the best view of all these women at once. Do what we can, make sure we're out of the way here. Yeah. Hey, for your judge. Chris Roglowski joining the crew here. Alandra looking like she is actually out pulling Meg, but not enough to, uh, to, to it's dent that. It's the same exact gap as when she got onto it in the first place, so it's still an entire length there and back difference. The question is now can, I think Meg probably has too much of a lead, but can Tara chop into second place? Can she push Alondra? Tara going the extended arms right there. Do you think that's an effort to get more breath into the lungs? Most likely. Open it up. And I wonder if she, she's doing the, uh, the Ryan Kent thing. Maybe save a little bit for the burpees at the end rather than pushing it. But knowing Tara, she's probably just going to try to get as close as she can to heading into it. See, and there goes touch. Meg Jacoby finish wow. the tank. It looks like Tara is about a half a length behind, but a half a length is a big difference. Yep. Uh, we, time on this time? Uh, we are just under 18 minutes, 17.55. Meg is coming into the burpees. And Tara and Alundra are both off. Alundra around the corner. The record for the deck of mile is 1946. She had a minute 20 to go. I think this is getting obliterated. I think so too. And here comes Alundra. Oh, yeah. We are going to get a burpee off between Alandra and Tara Jackson. Tara not letting this go. Right next to her. All three of these women going. Alandra is flying. Another burpee off, baby. Yes. That's who you are right there. I think Tara is giving everything she's got, but I just don't think she has enough of the tank to catch Alandra right now. Oh, that's a call going right next to That's what you should do. Just, it looks like Alondra's just going at too much of a pace for Tara right now. But she's picking it up now. She's putting down. Meg Jacoby crossed the line. Your deck of my world champion. And a new record by 26 seconds. Unofficial record, but it looks like it's 26 seconds according to Jack here. Alondra oh, Greeley with also another second. Time. Tara Jackson not quitting, still going, pushing as hard as she can. 
Tara also oh, breaks into the old record. Oh, great. Three women finishing three women above the old record. Now Bridget and Lauren Look going at, at it. Look at Look at the speed. I think Bridget's going to pass Lauren here. Bridget's the fastest on purpose. Chris, Chris Rigolowski wow. going. And look at the way she gets that straight up and down. Little flick of the wrist. Look at Bob in every race so far this weekend. Just looking still fresh. Former High Rocks World Champion. Bridget Brown takes it. Fifth place will be a battle between the four. I think that Lauren. Bridget Brown with about a 20 30. I think Chris is looking a little better. Absolutely, but Lauren had a big lead. Yes, I agree. But Chris seems to make almost two for one on these garbage. Lauren coming in. It's a good. Chris gets it right at the line. It came down to positioning. Chip time, though. Chip more. time. Will that make a difference? Ah, uh, that could be. That could be. I don't think. Heather White doing her burpees, and she is. Heather White finishing strong, getting this done. Her last race of the weekend. Well, I think Decca Mile delivered. I, I told you guys it would be yeah. the exciting one. Yeah. Imagine that. Heather White just doing everything she can. She has had a hell of a weekend. She came in fifth, I believe. Fifth, yeah, fifth in the strong, yeah. first in the in the Decca relay, and she's coming in here and she's still. She was back in the back of the pack for a long time, and now she's made her way up. Laura Cummings making her way into the picture. Still have Katie on the course. We got Laura doing some fast burpees here. Heather White finishing strong. 22 flat. And she came in, I think, actually seated lower and still managed to pull out. Yeah. Pull out and bring her seating. Katie and Laura, Laura finished Katie. it up. Laura and Katie. Yeah, Katie and Laura finished it up. They're still going to put in great times. Oh, yeah. 100%. And Laura, again, another person who came in here. Long race weekend, to be honest. Long yeah. race weekend. But winning a championship in the relay. Yes. Yeah. She basically did deck a fit. I think she was fifth or sixth, uh, sixth place there. And then threw in a 10 by 500 meter hard workout yeah, later in the night on her way to another title. So, long uh, weekend, but crushing it. And when you're, when you're running with Kevin, he doesn't give you a lot of time to recover between stations. <laughs> Not at all. Katie's cranking him out, though. I love seeing it. I love seeing when you're even when you're maybe at the back. Yeah. You're gonna finish strong. You're gonna finish like you're fighting for first. 100. Oh, percent Yancey nearly getting run over. Wouldn't be the first time this weekend. That time it was uh, later in the game. It was just as tight. Like worn yeah. out burpeter, but she had a longer run into the house. I know. And, and, she, difference. and she took the far, the close position, which is really the far, because you have to run after. Uh, well, Andre had a great tank. She edged her. She edged Mad on yeah. the tank. Yeah. Probably made up three or four seconds, maybe. Right, Yancy, we'll get last comments from you, then we'll go talk to some of these women. And if you, I know if you're still with us. Hopefully, you're still with us. There's still a lot of us still with you. Race was off the freaking rails. Chris and Lauren there, which was, was that fourth and fifth? Yeah. Uh, from fifth and sixth. Six. Fifth and sixth, just as close as Ryan. And, and oh, yeah. Ryan, it took the deck a mile to finally have our insane, tight finish. just tight, crazy finish with Rylan and Rick. What was that, about a half a second? Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Half yeah. I believe it was three tenths. Yeah. yeah. And you know what, what I love? They both had great freaking reps. Yeah. Um, that Next was a great to battle. Each other. I, Meg, you know, doesn't have as much deck experience as the rest of the athletes that she saw, but yep. she showed that she's for freaking real, real deal. ladies and gentlemen. So thank y'all so much for tuning in. Thanks to Dave and Jack behind the camera. Much love. To 2023 Deco. <laughs> Let's go. Any 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 clues where it's gonna be? Any clues? Any clues? Power <laughs> <laughs> Lift, our big sponsor, wants it to be in Arizona. We're thinking. Arizona, California, Texas. We have several spots on the map that the Canadians are <laughs> Toronto. We've got venues wanting to give us free space now, so people want us to come. Yeah. So if you want DECA in your city, if you want the World Championship in your city, give Yancey a call, set it up. Let's go see if we can find Meg Jacoby here. 
Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. It's not easy to do, but we got to chase this girl down for a sec. Meg, oh, hi. for the live stream. Hi. Congratulations. Hi. Thank you. Do you think it was unfair that you came in fresh? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. This is only my second DECA ever. I snuck a mile in kind of like right before the the end time of, uh, you know, to get a qualifying time. So, so uh, practiced a lot, but I didn't really know what to expect, and I've been watching everybody all weekend. So, I knew, I, I knew this was a stacked race. You came so. out and d deliberately pushed the pace. Do you yeah. think that maybe helped? Because some of them may have been a little winded from before, having a tough ride in recovery, pushing the pace early, maybe really played to your advantage? Yeah, but it's not, it's no different strategy than I would have came in. So, um, no, I feel really comfortable and really confident up front, and uh, I'm just confident in my ability. So, I knew that uh, if I had a chance, I had to be up there with the lead girls. Um, and just the first few stations seemed to go really well. So, I knew coming out of, uh, out of the lunges, I was like, well, I gotta really go now. So, so yeah, it was, it was fun and stacked field. All girls have been admiring from afar for the last few months since I've gotten in this world. So, it was very exciting to uh, compete with them today. So, are you gonna take the prize money from here to fly over to Germany to have yeah. donuts with Flo? Yeah, that's <laughs> possibly. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> awesome, Meg. Thank you so Thank much you and so congratulations. Much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Appreciate all the support. All right, we're gonna try to get one more from Tara. We'll give her a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lauren Weeks. What did they think of the, the race since they were here? All right. I just don't have a ramp, so I got a, like a, a 44. So I need to get a 44. Gentlemen, well, don't get in here, Rich. Get in here, Rich. We want you. All right. You guys got to watch the Ruins race. Quick, quick thing. What did you guys think of the mile? You were still everything this weekend. What race stood out for you guys as the race to be run? Run. One that you want to watch. The premier one that I, I know watch. the one you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I, I did watch Deck Strong coverage, and that was pretty exciting. It was. It was just like so fast paced. This, because you could see in the strong, it was like him at the beginning. In the mile, you could kind of like it was a super short run, but you could see the lead changes and like who was pulling ahead because they would come out for the run, but it was like straight into another station. So. Yeah. Ryland, your, your cornering technique on the mile, like you don't have to talk about it if you don't want, but it paid off. Did, yeah. did, did that have to do a little bit with your cycling background? Like you know how to take corners a little yeah. bit quicker? Yeah, so apexing, yeah. it's called like apexing a corner. So if you come in sharp and then you exit sharp, yes. you have to accelerate more. So instead of in, in mountain bike work, anytime you enter a corner, you'd rather enter it slow and exit fast. So I wanted to enter slow and wide and exit outside and fast. Did the grip in your shoes play into that any bit? Because it was a yes. bit of a slick corner there. Yes. Uh, honestly, I just I tried out the shoes. They felt fine, so I wanted to go for it. But, I mean, Ryan had enough gas to cut the corner sharp and accelerate out of it. So it awesome. Yeah. What about you, Ryan? What was the one to watch here? What one did you enjoy watching for these women? Yeah. What that? race? The fit, the mile, the strong? The when did you enjoy watching? For the women's in race? general. Yeah. Uh, probably, probably the strong. Yeah? Yeah. That chaos, that Yeah, un for sure. Yeah. I think it was just an overall good weekend. I, every every race had its own battles. And uh, they all kind of hurt a little bit differently. Is there anybody but, you want to face specifically next year? Like, come on. Hunter McIntyre. <laughs> come on in, baby. No, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm, we've got... You've got a, I, I don't think there are many people who could step into this even with you know six months of specific training yeah. and give you guys the money. I think one yet. thing you saw from this week is the people who train specifically for hybrid training it really excelled this weekend. You know there were a few outliers I think, but mostly the people who are all in on hybrid performed really well this weekend. Exactly. Yeah. It's a smart decision. You gonna yeah. go gamble in Atlantic City? Or? Drinks are on me tonight. All right, we heard it. Congratulations, buddy. Awesome job, Ryan. All right, let's see if we can get Tara one thing. We'll get one more interview. Yeah. Tara, can we steal you for one sec? How are you feeling? I don't think I have ever seen so much pain on your face. It hurt. I wanted to catch a longer, but. You made a hell of a comeback, though. You really pushed it down. I rallied. I rallied. But that seems to be your style. Each time it's always that little bit of comeback from home. But this one was Meg's freshness just a little too much to compensate for. My legs off the bat, I was like, we're just gonna go with what we got today. Those lunches were like, I was like pulling like 148, and I was like, oh, this is gonna be 
Because I'm normally blowing like low 140s. Right. Like, right. Well, you're looking at two firsts and a third. Either way, you win the weekend. Awesome job. It is definitely Terra Country. And we can't wait for see you next year. All right. Let's see how I can turn around from Madrid. That's right. Sorry All right. Off. Yeah, Jack, I think that's enough for us. Yep. One little last Nick Riker sighting. <laughs> On behalf of OCR Report, myself, Jack Bauer, thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, make sure you check out all this content. You Share it with your friends it. so you think it do well. That's right. And come on out and give it a try. It is a race that everybody can do. We've seen all manner of people do this this week. And uh, it's I would just have been a hell of a weekend. I would have had extreme FOMO if I wasn't here. So if you qualify for Deco Fit World Championship, any of the events next year, the crowd, like it, it's obviously a little more sparse right now because the race is over. But during those final burpees, that was one of the best atmospheres <laughs> I've ever seen in, uh, at a finish line in any race. How about you? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, that's why I like the mile because those those finishes, I mean, we've had a lot of great finishes today. The fit was amazing. It's just that test of endurance in a great race. But the mile and the strong provided those really close finishes that are very exciting to watch. And I think that they'll propel this forward. Um, anyway, Jack's got a flight to catch. I got a race to get ready for. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate everything. We'll see you soon. Yes. And the battery didn't die.